Hi, I'll present the paper called Unsupervised Anomaly Localization Using Rational Autoencoders, published at Nikkei 19, accepted as an abstract at BVM 2020. Okay, let's start with what anomaly localization and detection is. For anomaly detection, basically given a lot of healthy samples, we want to detect samples which deviate from those, which are abnormal or have anomalies. In this case, we have three examples, one with a tumor, one with a stroke, and one with various lesions. However, we want to go one step further and also localize the anomalies. That means showing where the anomalies are. As you can see here, now the anomalies are outlined. So. Let's illustrate this a little bit further. Therefore, let's assume all our samples here are actually data points. And now, to find the abnormal data points, basically one way to do this is to assume the data distribution or the distribution from which the data samples stem from, and then basically pick the deviation from the data distribution or the distance from the data distribution as an anomaly score, as you can see here. One further way to visualize this is in the 1D case. So what's one approach to do this? Basically here we now have data samples and the data distribution. And here we have a likelihood model, F, which gives us, given our parameters for each data sample, our likelihood. And an approach now to approximate the data distribution with a likelihood is called maximum likelihood. How does that work? Basically, for each data sample, we now increase or maximize the likelihood. We do this basically for multiple data samples or all data samples so that in the end hopefully our likelihood function kind of captures the data distribution. And one very popular way to do this, especially with images, are VAEs. For VAEs, the log density of uh, our model is basically captured by this term, which is called the evidence lower bound or elbow. As you can see here, it consists of two parts, the KL divergence and the reconstruction error. But how can we now implement this formula in practice? Therefore, we have to do some, or take some uh, assumptions, make some approximations. And the first is for the, our uh, approximate inference distribution, Q. Uh, we assume a normal distribution, which is parameterized by a function e, which gives our mean and our standard deviation, and for which we'll use a neural network encoder. So this is our neural network encoder, which gets an image, and then it outputs a mean and standard deviation. Okay. Furthermore, we have to assume some prior distribution, for our latent variables or hidden data causing factors set, for which we'll simply use a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. Furthermore, now to calculate this expectation, we'll basically sample from the inference distribution Q using the reparameterization trick and as is most commonly done, we'll use one Monte Carlo sample. More can result in better performance, but for computational resources, we'll use just one. Furthermore, for P, we'll now also assume a normal distribution. Uh, P is our generative model here. Um, or generative. function, uh, for which we'll also assume a normal distribution, which is now parameterized by a decoder 
d which decodes z and some constant star duration c so in the end we now have a decoder which then decodes our sample um, z again and the normal distribution or with a log then basically uh, becomes a mean squared arrow with the standard deviation or divided by the standard deviation c square or 2 c square plus some constant or more or less constant value so in the end what do we have basically give an input image get a mu and a set from which we create normal distribution and sample a set then we use that, that to and give it into a decoder which should reconstruct our image and then in the end we basically calculate the construction error between the input image and the constructed image and furthermore the KL divergence can be analytically determined for two normal distributions so this gives our loss which we then maximize and after training hopefully or oh, how does it look now Now in the end, we have again our data distribution and then hopefully our elbow or approximate elbow um, which hopefully approximates the data distribution and it consists of two parts, the KL divergence and the reconstruction error. And in the end, we hopefully can take the approximate likelihood or the score our model gives for each data sample as an anomaly score. However, is the elbow really better than the KL version or the reconstruction error? Well, in theory, yes, then we only uh, maximize the approximate elbow. That means we can either um, lower the KL version or lower the reconstruction error or both, but it's not sure whether one is really low and one can still be high or the other way around. So, theory the end elbow should be better but in practice who knows therefore we evaluated multiple models basically we took a basic VAE from the PyTorch uh, VAE example and increased and smaller the latent dimensions we used different input image sizes where we basically upscaled the image this kind of implicitly uh, raised the KL version versus the reconstruction area differently then we also changed the reconstruction standard deviation C, which also kind of downweighs or upweighs the reconstruction error in comparison to the other versions. And we also looked at different anomalies, for example, wearing the image class for fashion analyst or looking at medical anomalies. So, what did we find? Now, here for fashion analyst, for the brain data, the uh, results are kind of similar with a standard model here given by the blue uh, square and then we wear it and as you can see as we vary the different parameters the results also kind of vary a lot and this is especially uh, prominent here where we only vary the odd class and keep the model the same and the training procedure the same and at the end of the training, as you can see, there's quite a lot of variance in which term works best. And to make the case even worse, we now took the model with the worst KL divergence in relative to the construction error and elbow, and we only tweaked one hyperparameter. And with only tweaking one hyperparameter, now shown in five star here, the KL term is now the best and outperforms the other by a far length whether they kind of stay similar. So now <coughs> without any uh, validation set or testing set to test it, do we know now which model works best? Uh, no, there's in general like no free lunch, no real winner. So we think one should at least consider the elbow because it at least had a theoretical motivation if no validation set is given to really test which model works best. But as a medical, we are often not interested in which image is anomalous, but which pixel or what causes the anomalies. 
and uh, what's basically most commonly done and most of the work is 94. People only use the reconstruction error or the pixel-wise reconstruction error to get a pixel-wise difference, which hopefully indicates the rating. But as you can have seen before, not all models for all models the reconstruction error is the best. So why do people ignore the other terms? And one problem is perhaps how to use the CAD versions on a pixel-wise level. And basically we used a quite simple uh, score for this, basically simply the saliency maps, that is we divide the derive the KL loss by the image on pixel-wise level, and then for each pixel basically it get a score of how much it contributes to the KL loss, and then basically the magnitude of this can give us an indication in how abnormal it is for the KL or given the KL loss. And basically we can also do this for the reconstruction loss and the elbow. And how does it work or does it work? Well, yes. Basically, therefore, we took a now again standard VAE and with validation set um, changed higher parameters of the VAE model. And uh, as you can see here, when looking at the KL, this fine tuned model basically outperforms all the other ones. And just the default model, just a more or less educated guess model. Uh, performed similar to other presented deep learning works and yeah still performs kind of reasonably to non-deep learning work which incorporates a lot of prior information about the organ. So here we further have some resolutions where we have the input, the construction error, then the uh, KL loss derivative the reconstruction error derivative and the ration ultron code loss derivative that hopefully approximate the elbow. And uh, as you can see here, the KL loss works quite well. And the VAE loss is kind of uh, mostly influenced by the uh, KL loss as well. So, therefore, we also proposed a new thing called comp or combination where instead of just using derivative, we use the KL loss and multiply it with the construction loss directly. Uh, since this kind of equally weighs those and removes the, or kind of removes some of the noisiness from the gradients, or circumvents it. Okay. But uh, then again, how well does it work? for each model and which model works best, does it always perform the best. And therefore we looked at the PETS data on a pixel-wise level where we trained on HCP, on the HCP data that of healthy humans, young people, and then evaluated on the PETS data set, the tumor detection data set. And uh, as you can see here, well, in most of our approaches, actually, the KL and the combi were the most prominent one, given our default model, and the reconstruction error worked best in kind of uh, models where the reconstruction were kind of blurry and the model kind of was degenerated. So, at least we think that the KL loss has at least some importance and should not be ignored. So, what can we conclude now? If you use VAE for your anomaly detection, please do not only use the reconstruction error. The VAE model or framework has a lot of diff or has many or more terms. And there are a lot of other possibilities to integrate this, not just the um, saliency maps, but later other work also used some other methods to include this and also worked quite well. However, all of the things we said only hold if you have like no validation set on which you can evaluate how well your model or your hyperparameters work on actually anomaly detection. Or you present five models and one works best and then you say, hey, this works best for this task. However, we think this is not a realistic setting for anomaly detections, then anomaly detections are mostly, or anomalies are mostly unknown or should be unknown that it's anomaly and everything that is anormal to be detected. We think you, in general, have no real validation set 
for at least the real practice. Okay, thanks for your attention.